Taking great landscape photos shouldn't take a mountain of work, but all too often a magnificent landscape ends up looking minute. Do you think it's possible to have your photograph look as majestic as what you saw with your eyes? Of course it is! Today we'll show you several ways to put things in line so that your photo is as beautiful as the landscape itself. And you'll learn how to join multiple images into one continuous panorama picture. Clear the fog around taking great landscape photographs, next on The Whole Picture. Welcome to The Whole Picture. I'm Erin Manning. You know, one of the most common complaints I hear from photography students is, the landscape was so beautiful, but my photograph just doesn't do it justice. What you need to remember is what we see versus what the camera sees are two different things. We're able to see a wider image than the camera does, and our eyes translate a greater range of light. Add that to the fact that most digital cameras have a lesser ability to work with light than film cameras do, and you can understand why there's such a dramatic difference. In this photograph here of the Santa Barbara Bay, we have a lot of sky and a lot of water and a horizon line that's right in the middle, which makes for a rather uninteresting photograph. And it's really missing some information off here to the side that the camera wasn't able to capture that would tell us that we're actually in Santa Barbara. Well, speaking of information, in this image of the Rocky Broad River, we really have a little too much information with a lot of trees, the river, some lovely power lines, and there's really no point of focus here. There's no foreground, there's no background, so there's really no depth to this photograph. Well, the good news is there are some very simple techniques you can use that will help you take better landscape photographs that come pretty close to what you see with your eyes. I'd like to introduce you to Chris Tucker. Hey Chris, thanks for coming in. Hey. Now Chris has been taking landscape photographs for years, and he just recently bought a digital camera, but he's not too pleased with the results. Mm, no. So Chris, let's take a look at some of your photos and see if we can figure out the problems here. Yeah, here's one. Okay, well, what do you like about this photograph? Um, I, I really enjoy the, the scenery in the background, mm -hmm. this tree in particular mm -hmm. is, is my favorite thing about it. What do you not like about it? Um, Maybe too much grass? I think you're right, yeah. I, I like the fact that you have a little bit different camera angle on it, so the horizon line is really higher up here, but the grass is just not all that interesting. I would rather look at the trees, I think, than the brown spots, so maybe you could have brought the angle up a little bit. Yeah. Let's look at your other photograph. Okay, what do you like about this photo? Um, I, I really enjoy the gazebo, mm -hmm. uh, but I. I feel like um, it's uh, a bit busy. Mm -hmm. yeah, just mm -hmm. It is. It's, I'd say there's a little too much information in this, and there's no real focus on any one thing. Mm -hmm. It's good that you do have a little bit of foreground action going on here versus the background, but there's just still a not enough depth, and again, just not focus on any one thing. Let me show you a picture that I took recently. Um, happened to be in the Panama Canal. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. And the color is fantastic. Um, one of the things that you want to pay attention to is where your horizon line is. And here the horizon line is down low because I thought the clouds were much more interesting, the cloud formation. And I do have a point of interest here, the sun. Uh, just the sun and the shape and the horizon line make for a pretty interesting photograph. But don't worry, I'm going to show you some techniques today that will help you learn how to take a great landscape photograph. Good. First, we'll learn about camera position. And by that I mean the best camera angle or point of view so you can frame up the best possible landscape photo. And when you're comfortable with that, I'll explain why using a tripod is super important in landscape photography. Okay. And then when you're ready, we'll bring all the lessons together and you'll create a panorama image out of some of the images you shoot today. Sounds good. So when you're ready, we'll come back to the studio and we're gonna build that panorama image with special software I put on my computer. Sound like a plan? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to grab your camera and okay. let's go get the rest of the equipment. Okay, you hold this. Right. And the most important piece of gear we'll use today is this tripod. Now, I can't recommend enough using a tripod in landscape photography because the steadier your camera, the sharper the image. And we'll use this lightweight one today because we'll be moving around a lot. And yeah. the second most important piece of equipment is this level. 
And the reason we're using this is the tripod might be level, but the camera might not be. Uh -huh. So we'll put this on top of the camera to make sure not going up or downhill. Gotcha. And then the last piece of business today is location, location, location. <laughs> because there's not a better place to start practicing landscape photography than your own backyard. So let's load up the gear and head on over to your house. Sounds good, Ready? let's go. Whether in your backyard or at the Grand Canyon, the principles of landscape photography are always the same. Up next, I'll show you how to line up everything you need to take a great landscape photograph. Welcome back to the whole picture. Chris Tucker wants to learn how to make his landscape photographs look as good as the landscape itself, because most of his pictures have turned out more dreary than dramatic. Well, the only way to get better at landscapes is to get outside and start shooting. And what better place to practice than in your own backyard? Well, in landscape photography, it's really important to pick a good location. And your parents have a beautiful backyard. Thank so you. We've got Thank a lot you. to work with today. Another thing is the quality and direction of light. Right now it's midday, partly cloudy. Yeah. The sun will be in and out, but actually it'll give us some good lighting options to work with throughout the day. Yeah. So looking around here, what do you think you'd like to shoot? I've always loved that tree. Okay. Well, it looks like a good spot. Now that we've picked a good spot, let's go ahead and set up and we'll figure out how we're going to technically get the shot. So let's start talking about camera positioning. Camera positioning is really just another name for point of view or your perspective on the scene. And it may sound really rudimentary, but it's very important to get the right perspective, the right camera positioning, and that's really gonna affect your final outcome of your image. Oh, I didn't know that. So to get down to the nuts and bolts of camera positioning, I've worked out a little exercise for you. All right. You're gonna take three shots, all from the same place. And before we get started, let's go ahead and take a look at your camera and we'll adjust it to the landscape mode. Why the landscape mode? Well, good question. First of all, landscape mode is that little uh, mountain range right, right. there, okay. and your camera it even says landscape. But what it does is it automatically adjusts the camera's exposure to get the most detail for the scene for the landscape photo. I see. Now this first shot's really easy. Go ahead and take a picture of the tree the way you normally would, and then we'll take a look. Okay, what do you think about that shot? Uh, it's okay. Yeah, well, you know, the tree's beautiful, and it looked like it was in focus, but there's nothing really that compelling or dynamic about the point of view. Hmm. And that's why we're going to use it as a comparison. Oh. So for the next two shots, stay in the same place, except this time we're going to establish the horizon line just like we did back in my studio, remember? I remember. Uh -huh. So we don't want to put the horizon line right in the middle. So go ahead and tilt your camera up a little bit. That way the horizon line's in the lower part of the frame. So the center of your photo should include this tree and the clouds. Very nice. Now try it the other way. Go ahead and point it a little bit further down so the horizon line's higher up in the frame. Oh, that looks great. Can you see the difference? Time of day is a consideration for landscape pictures. As the light changes, different hours present different photo opportunities and different challenges, but the right camera positioning remains key. Take a moment to observe your subject and think about the photo you want. Then use the horizon lines to alter the composition of your image. Simple tilts of the camera will move the horizon line and give you different points of view of the same object. In addition to horizon lines, you can also add depth and distinction to a landscape photo by emphasizing objects in the foreground of the image. Try including items in the middle and background of the image and observe the difference between the three. Experimenting will help make your landscape photos more compelling. Hey, you're catching on. I'll go ahead and set up the tripod. Just extend the legs all the way out and make sure they're clamped down tight. We'll get this set up. But we're not gonna put the camera on just yet. Oh. Now if we had a 35 millimeter camera with a big wide angle lens, we'd be able to capture all this information in the scene. But right now we're dealing with a point and shoot camera. So what's the next best thing to do to get all this information in the scene? Um, back up. Exactly. So we'll just back up the tripod a little bit. It's about here. Now we also want to make sure that the picture's level. Okay, this tripod happens to have something called a level, which is right here. And oh. there's a little bubble in the middle, and you just kind of line it up and make sure this is level. 
Now on this tripod, you could also be moving the camera around a little bit, so that might not be level. So additionally, you could get a carpenter's level at the hardware store and just put it right on top of the camera. Since good landscape photos require a steady shooting platform, a tripod is an invaluable asset to all photographers. Some tripods are equipped with built-in levels, but most are not. It's always a good idea to keep a small level in your photography bag. Then, once your camera is mounted, you can use it to quickly make sure that the camera itself is level. You have to be careful because although the legs of the tripod may be level, the camera may not, and your pictures may look as if they're going up or downhill. Your tripod will keep your camera steady and parallel to the ground, but that doesn't mean your pictures have to be fixed on one spot. Experiment with the tripod's up and down motion or rotate the head to get different points of view. If you're trying to build a series of images, like in a panorama, a level tripod will help ensure that they're all in line. Chris, I think you're getting the hang of it. But you know what, the rain's getting worse, so let's go up to the house. Okay. Now that Chris has a more secure footing on the basic steps of taking good landscape photographs, it's time he acquired a broader perspective on things. That's up next. Welcome back to The Whole Picture. To take really beautiful landscape photos, be flexible. Remember, point and shoot doesn't always mean that you don't take the time to set up your shot. Experiment with the horizon line and vary your point of view. And while you're at it, why not use a tripod to make sure the scene is really level? But what happens when the landscape itself is just too big for your camera? I'm Erin Manning, and I'm teaching Chris Tucker how to take better landscape photographs. Chris, I think you picked a good spot. We're covered, rain or shine. That's my favorite view. Now, remember back in the studio when we were critiquing your photographs? Mm -hmm. One of the things we discussed was that you were trying to include too much in your shots. Well, there is a way to take landscape photographs, include a lot in your shots, and make it visually pleasing by taking a panorama shot. Huh. Like right now, with this great backyard. You know, panorama images have been around a long time. They used to take them and then paste them together back in the studio or the darkroom. But now, with computer software, you can create a seamless panorama image with a regular digital camera. Wow. So, to create a panorama image, you take a series of photographs starting at one side, rotating from the middle, just like that. So that's why I put the tripod right here. We're going to take three photographs starting at this side of the yard and move across, overlapping each one just a little bit so we have enough room to stitch them together at the end. Building a great panorama photograph requires two key ingredients beginning with your camera. It has to be as level as possible and on a stable platform like a tripod or table. The other key is to visualize and plan your final image before shooting, because with a panorama, you need to know where the shots will overlap before you shoot. When you're ready, start at the left side of your scene and move to the right. Plan the pictures so that they overlap one another by 30 to 50 percent, and it's best to place a distinctive object in the overlapping area of each image. That will make it easier for the software on the computer to combine the images when you get home. Some digital cameras have a special panorama function that allows you to take the photos and preview the completed shot before going back home to print them out, which is a nice feature if you take a lot of landscape photos. For more information on building a panorama photograph, be sure to visit our website at DIYNetwork.com. Isn't that great? It's awesome. I can't wait to print these out. You know what, let's head back to the studio. Okay. okay. When we come back, we'll thread the whole day's lessons together and see if Chris's panorama photograph turns out as grand as the real thing. Making your landscape photographs a grand accomplishment isn't that hard. It just takes patience, planning, and practice. Using a tripod will provide you with a stable level base so that your pictures aren't running uphill when Mother Nature isn't. 
play with the horizon line and work with fore and background objects to give your pictures the sense of grandeur that the real scene gave you. When you have the basics in place, you can expand your horizon and build large panoramas that can bring the scale of the scene home with you. But building a panorama doesn't end in the field. Once you're home, you get to see if you were really able to thread together everything you learned. So Chris, did you have fun out there today? I had a blast. I think you did a great yeah. job. Thank you. And learned a lot. So I went ahead and plugged in your camera and downloaded all the pictures to the computer. Oh, so let's go ahead and start clicking through and look at your photos. This first one I really like here. You've incorporated a lot of interesting information, tells a story. We have a foreground and a background, so we've got some depth in it. It's a lot better than the first couple that I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good. That's nice too. I like how you've angled the horizon line and we see more trees. Very nice. Well, I like how you've played around with the angle a little bit. A little bit different perspective. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. Pretty good. That's good. And there's your favorite tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Always, that's my favorite shot anyway. Okay. You ready to build the panorama? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll start by closing out this photo bin. We'll go up to File, Close All. And the reason for that is we need a clean slate to create oh. the panorama image. So the way we do it is go back up here to the menu bar, click on File, New, and roll over to... Photo merge. Okay, now this gives us the window where we're going to go and browse for the photo merge photos. Go ahead and click on browse. Right. What I've done is created a folder of the best panorama images, the three images you took in a row that I think will go together the best. And the way we'll do these is I'll hold down the shift key and go ahead and just click on all three. Make sure they're highlighted. There we go. And click on open. All right. Now here are all three images. Go ahead and click OK and the computer works its magic and creates the panorama image. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that great? Yes. It's poof, cool. magic. All right, well, notice there's some doubling up of yeah. some of the images here. Yeah, what's it's that not, about? It's not exactly perfect because we changed our perspective. Remember we had the, the tripod uh -huh. head kind of moving around a little bit? So right now we're looking at it in normal mode, which is just straight on. But since we moved our perspective, let's tell the computer we did that and click on perspective here, and it will adjust the photo for that. Hey, there you go. So now it's perfect. Has a little bit of an interesting edge to it, which is, yeah. is interesting. Yeah, but we crop want that maybe? We can. We, we want to print it out, so we will crop it. So go ahead and click OK. and the computer will render the image and give us the final panorama. There it is. Voila, it's magic. Okay, come over here on the toolbar and we'll just click on the crop tool. There you go. Just click on top of the image and drag over and crop it the way you'd like to see it. That looks good. Okay, just double click. That looks fantastic. Yeah, I like it. Now that's so much more than the cam camera would have normally seen, mm -hmm. right? Okay, let's do a file save, okay. and we'll print it out. If you'd like to learn more about any of the techniques you saw here today, or just more about landscape photography, log on to our website at DIYNetwork.com. Now, Chris, let's talk a little bit about the photo you brought in earlier today. Hmm. Remember the problems you were having? Yes. Um, point of view was a little off. Um, a lot of grass, not so interesting. And I didn't get that gazebo in the picture at all, which was nice. Well, that's true, and that had to do with the fact that the camera could only capture so much information in this picture, so there, was, there were things over here and over here we didn't get. Um, your angle was a little off, and yes, this is kind of uninteresting here. <laughs> <laughs> but you learned a lot today because look what you produced. Oh, very nice. I think it looks wonderful. Now, this is a panorama image, so of course we've captured more information on either side, but I noticed that it's nice and level. You've um, adjusted your angle, so we have a more interesting horizon line. There's information in the foreground and the background, so there is some depth to it. I think it turned out great. Much better. Keep up the good work. And remember, always bring your camera with you, because the more pictures you take, the better you get. Makes sense. I hope you'll use the techniques you learned today and take your own great landscape photographs. Join me next time on The Whole Picture. Okay, I think we need to get in and start doing some cropping here. And we could probably bring in other photographs you took too. Okay, I'm gonna file, maybe open it.